Did you know you're listening to a podcast? Did you know that this podcast was a game show? Are you ready to learn some fun facts and trivia? Welcome to Fun Facts with my friend Lee. Hello, editing Connor here. Quick note before we get started. For some reason during this recording, I bumped the table a lot and or bumped the microphone. I'm not exactly sure, but there's several instances where there's a slightly loud metallic spring clang noise. I don't know exactly what it is, and for some reason I can't remove it from the audio, so I do apologize. I hope you enjoy the show. Well, there you go. Shucky darn, sir. Yeah. Well, darn it. Well, let's do the thing. All right. Um, So really quickly, because you uh, haven't gotten to experience any of the episodes yet, I will explain how things work, even though you did hear the uh, little preview episode. Um, I did hear the preview, yep. So the, like the preview episode said, um, there's three categories. Each category has three facts. Uh, and in each ca- category, one of those facts is a lie. You get one guess, one official guess per category to so determine it's, it's which one is the truths. lie. Two truths it's and a lie. Two truths and a lie, just like, um, just like, wait, wait, don't tell me. Yeah, yeah, uh, sort of. <laughs> yeah, um, and but you get one hint um, in each of the categories. So if you need the hint, you can ask for it. Um, and you get one fifty-fifty per game, uh, and you can feel free to talk out any answers or anything that you like um but i won't be able to give too much information but yeah um okay, I'll, cool. I'll let you choose which category you want to start with um so the categories are history uh oh come on where did sorry my computer is arguing with me uh literature really and theater so history literature and theater i picked the other two well, categories huh well, let's go in that order then. That works for me. In that order? All right. Yeah, I, I picked literature and theater uh, knowing that I know you. So, <laughs> figure. Yeah, here's your other problem. I also teach history. So oh, you also teach you history? Oh, the, I didn't know that. You picked the three You picked the three things I teach. Well, but these uh, are good things for us to like chatter about in the intro, so. Yeah, so uh, weird weird history is just uh, one of the things that I really like. So everybody gets a weird history category. That's the one category that's absolutely consistent across all the podcasts. So. No, I think that's smart. Yeah, so um, the three weird history facts I have for you are... One, Paul Revere never actually shouted, the British are coming. Two, the Olympics used to w- award medals for science. And three... A woman was elected to Congress before women could vote. All right, so quick question because I know you can edit this. So we're recording now. Yeah. And we're and I'm playing now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, okay. So Paul Revere never said the British are coming. Uh, it, the Olympics used to award medals for science, and a woman was nominated to Congress before women could vote. I know the one of those that is. Th- th- Am I looking for the one that's true or the one that's not true? You're looking for the false one. The false one. Mm-hmm. Okay, but that... Okay, but here's the problem. That makes it a double negative because I know that Paul Revere never said the British are coming, but if he didn't not say that, then that means he did say that, so your answer is a double negative, so I win. <laughs> <laughs> not quite how that works, but yeah. <laughs> you win, sure. Did I get it right? Uh. N- <laughs> Uh, that's not your official guess, is it? Yeah, Paul Revere never said the British are coming. I, okay, I know a woman ran for Congress before women were allowed to vote. I don't know if she won. Um, and I think the Olympics used to do, like, science and academics and stuff like that. And then they turned into just, like, they did just... It's not very exciting to watch, like, you know, um, competitive chemistry labs, I guess. Um as, as much as it is to watch people throw spears. So, you know, the Olympics was like, how can we, how can we better market this? How can we make this more exciting? This is not markable enough. Are you sure that you want to go with the Paul Revere answer? 
<sighs> Cassidy, ah, uh, uh, fine, 50-50. You're going to use the 50-50 rather than using the hint? Uh, um... Okay, fine, give me a hint. Okay, so the hint is one of these things is not like the other. Paul Revere never actually shouted, the British are coming. The Olympics used to award medals for science, and a woman was elected to Congress before women could vote. None of those things are like the other things at all. Uh, two of them are political history. So the uh, the Olympics were never about science. Is that your final answer? Yes. That is correct. Ah, okay. um, the Olympics. Why do I feel like they were? The Olympics used to award medals for art which did also include a science category. Um, okay. From 1912 to 1948, the Olympic Games held a competition uh, for the fine arts. Um, it was gotten rid of after 1948 because it wasn't, um, yeah, it wasn't as it wasn't fun to watch. popular it wasn't and fun television. to watch. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but 151 medals were awarded for it. And uh, Greece actually holds some of those medals. Uh, Greece, Britain, and um, I can't remember who else owned the most of those medals, but yeah. Yep. And then, yes, a woman was elected to Congress before women could vote. Uh, that woman was Jeanette Rankin, uh, who joined Congress in 1916, uh, which was four years before women could vote. Yeah. Which just makes her, like, the G-O-A-T badass. Right. And then uh, Paul Revere never said the British are coming uh, because had he been shouting as the British were coming, the British in the forest would have heard him. Um, so he actually uh, rode a horse through town holding up a lantern that was uh, burning a specific colored flame or something to that effect. My notes were not clear, and they were not clear exactly when I read them on all of the research I read, some of them said the it's color... Also, it's also been historically argued that Paul Revere maybe didn't even make that entire ride. It was actually a person of color, and they co-opted the story because that wasn't, you know, good press, I guess. Oh, yeah. Which is yep. so much fun. Yay! Erasing people of color from history like we've been doing. Whitewashing. Be better, America. Woo. Be better, please, America. And yet. Yeah, you know. All right, and what are you drinking today? I am enjoying myself a root beer float as a treat because, um, can you hear how delicious it is? Mm -hmm. It's like that ASMR thing of people chewing. I'm just going <laughs> to ASMR my eating a root beer float. Um, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm back on Noom and doing yoga every day and running and exercising and working on feeling better. And um, every once in a while, Noom is like, treat yourself. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna treat myself. So I'm having a root beer float and nice. talking to you. I am drinking an Irish coffee. Well, sort of, um, it's actually made with Kahlua, or not, um, not Kahlua, uh, rum chata instead of Bailey's. I do like rum chata. They do a really nice, like cinnamon flavored one. That's that's real not not like not like Fireball hot cinnamon, but like that warm, like you put it on toast cinnamon flavor. It's Christmas cinnamon. Chris, yes, Christmas cinnamon rather than alcoholic cinnamon. Yeah, Christmas cinnamon, yeah. not candle cinnamon. Yes, exactly. I love it. Oh. Um, no, that's great. If your if your coffee isn't Irish, is it really even coffee? Right. Right. Yes, it probably is, but just just for the sake of argument, no, no, it's not. All right, so quiz me. What's what's our next topic? All right, so this next one is literature because you decided to go down in order here. Um, and so the f next three facts I have for you are: Victor Hugo wrote the libretto for the first stage up to adaptation of one of his books. Two, Jonathan Swift invented the name Vanessa. And three, the first adaptation of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz was in silent film. 
I, wow. Um, okay, I am going to use the 50-50 on this one. I'm pretty damn sure that Victor Hugo did write the libretto. I don't know about the Wizard of Oz one, and I feel like no one invented the name Vanessa, but I could be wrong. So, um, give me a 50-50. Um, you are correct on Victor Hugo writing the libretto for the first stage adaptation of one of his books. Uh, it was La Esmeralda. Oh, um, and it was the grand opera in four acts composed by Louise Burton. Uh, the libretto was written by Victor Hugo, uh, adapted from the Hunchback of Notre, ba- Notre Dame or Notre Dame. Or Great. So I have really that. actually clarified nothing for myself. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and you still have a hint for this category as well. I still have a hint for this category. Okay. I'll take the hint. Hugo Swift and Baum. Oh my. Okay, that also that was not helpful, Cassidy. <laughs> that was not helpful at all. Um, I think that's pointing me toward the Wizard of Oz one. Um, but is it pointing me toward the Wizard of Oz one being true? I guess it is. So I think Jonathan, it is. Maybe it's not. Uh, no. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. I'm going to access my mental memory banks right now. Okay. Ready? Okay. The Wizard of Oz is set in the early 1930s, which means it was written probably in the 20s or 30s. We already had talkies by then. So if there was a film adaptation, it would not have been a silent movie. It would have been a talking movie regardless, because by then we had talking pictures. So I'm going to go with Jonathan Swift did not invent the name Vanessa. Are you sure? (laughs) Okay, hold on. The purpose is to find the one that's not true, right? Yes. Okay, then the one that's not true is is the one about the Wizard of Oz. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. No, but I'm guessing. I'm making my guess. Okay, that's your final guess? Yes. All right, that is correct. Yes. See, the look at me first, knowing stuff about stuff. <laughs> the first adaptation was actually a stage musical that premiered in Chicago in 1902, written by Baum himself, and it ran on and off Broadway and on tour for or until 1911, when it was closed down and released for amateur licensing. This one actually has quite a bit of information on it as well, because I think the stage adaptation that they produced was just such a weird, weird thing. Um, it was. Well, I mean, have you read the original Wizard of Oz? It is a weird, weird thing. This, uh, it, this was notably so different from the original book that it's actually gone into such obscurity that no one has even heard it exists. Um, Toto was replaced by a cow named Emma Jean. There were two extra characters brought in named Trixie Trifle, and, who was a waitress, and Pastoria, who was a streetcar operator. Uh, the four of them uh, were all victims of the tornado. Okay. The Wicked Witch of the West and all the other three witches are entirely eliminated from the script. Um... And the plot becomes about how the four friends are allied with usurping the wizard and are hunted traitors to Pastoria the Second, the rightful king of Oz. And wow. although, yeah, although Baum did actually adapt the version of the show himself, it is unclear how much control or influence he had on the script. It appears that many of the changes were written by him against his wishes due to contractual requirements with the producer Fred Hamlin. Um, yeah, it was also notably a much more adult-centered show. Well, I mean, okay, like, all of the Wizard of Oz stuff is a lot more adult than people give it credit for. Also, do not watch Return to Oz. That is nightmare fuel. Oh, I love Return to Oz. It's one of my favorites. No! Um, but no, nightmare like, it was burlesque <laughs> Oh, oh, it was a burly cube. Yeah. No, um, no, no. Dorothy with tassels. No. <laughs> no, I don't like it. I don't like it, Cassidy. I don't like it. 
<laughs> Jonathan Swift. There's no place like home. There's no place like home, and it's not the shoes she's bopping together. I don't like it. Click, click, click. Oh, uh, my God, no! Uh, oh, goodness. Yeah, Jonathan Swift did actually invent the name Vanessa. It was invented uh, by him for as a pet name for Esther Van Humray. Who, okay, so just no one in history had been named Vanessa before then? Correct. Uh, whom Swift had met in 1708, and whom he tutored... Um, yeah, uh, the name was created by taking Van from her last name and Essa, a shortened pet form of Esther, and squishing them together. Well, that's... I have learned something new. Yep. Oh, it, it's... It, yeah. I, I like teaching people things, and uh, and this was a fun way to do it. So, yes, I have I have learned a thing. I don't know how useful it will be, but I have learned a thing. That's the bulk of my knowledge. Is it's not extremely useful to anyone, but it's nice but it's to really know. Really entertaining. <laughs> we call it being a font of worthless information. Right. Oh, right. And then the last category here for you is theater. So, um, the first fact in this category is the Broadway success via Galactica originally went up in the Gershwin Theater. Number two is The Persians is considered the oldest surviving Greek tragedy. And number three is Break a Leg comes from actors in vaudeville. Okay, I know that break a leg does come from vaudeville because it means to it means to peek through the curtain because they've called for an encore because you're so good because those particular for the audience um, the long curtains on either side of a stage are called legs or travelers and to break the leg would mean that you would peek your head out so you'd get more applause so when they say break a leg they mean we hope you get so much applause they want you to come back out a second time because you would get paid bonuses sometimes if that happened. Yay! Um, okay, so that takes me down to the weird one about the Gershwin. That That's oddly specific. And the Persians um, just did Greek theater. Who wrote the Persians? I can give you that information if you like. Can you can you tell me who wrote the Persians? I cannot pronounce his name, but it's a, a Aeschylus. A, Aeschylus. Aeschylus? Okay. Aeschylus, Aeschylus. wrote the Persians. Yeah, he wrote a bunch of tragedies. Um, actually, we have a fair amount of the stuff that he wrote, and we only have one or two things. Um, there's there's a lot of Greek stuff that we've lost. Okay, Aeschylus. I feel like the Gershwin one is just too weirdly specific to be true, so I'm going to go with the Persians is not the earliest Greek tragedy. Are you sure? Do you want me to ask for a hint? You want me to ask for a hint? Fine, give me a hint. So the hint on this one is actually a bonus 50-50. So the Persians is actually considered the oldest living Greek tragedy. Um, or the oldest surviving Greek tragedy. It was a, a series of th uh, three plays that he wrote, um, and it, the Persians is the second in that series. We don't know exactly what the first and the third um, are about, um, there's only speculation on that, but it was first produced back in 1472 and is considered the oldest surviving uh, play in the history of theater. Uh, it's also the only extant Greek tragedy that is based on what was then contemporary events. Most contemporary uh, event tragedies in Greece were, or not tragedies, were comedies or tragic comedies. Or they were making fun of the government. Yep. Well, then that just leaves us with the music box is the one that's not true, or the or the Gershwin rather. That I've is. I've never even heard of. I have never even heard of Via Galactica. That is correct. Uh, it's false, actually, in about two and a half ways. The first way is the Gershwin Theater was actually named the Eurus Theater at the time that Via Galactica went up. Via Galactica was a massive flop, and the 
half reason was that it was actually originally called Up. The producers decided to change the name of the musical when they uh, booked it to the Broadway theater as they did not want the marquee to read Up Uris. Um, <laughs> in big, bold light letters in Times Square. Uh, oh my god. Yep. Uh, side note, the production actually starred Raul Julia, who was most famous as his role in Gomez Adams in yeah, the early Raul 90s. Julia, so this would have been like, what, the 80s? Uh, late it was, 70s, early 80s? Yeah, late 70s. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Weird. I love Raul Julia. It's sad what happened to him. Yeah. Yeah. I, he... I, I I both mean the way that he died and the fact that his last role was in that terrible Mortal Kombat movie, but I mean, that's just me. I didn't even know he was in the terrible Mortal Kombat movie. Oh my god, it's so bad, and Raul Julia is super cancery and dying while he's shooting it, and I'm just like, dude, this was not this was not worthy of your legacy, my man. And then and it wasn't. It, it's real sad. I would have also accepted that uh, break a leg was false as well, um, because it no one actually knows for sure the origins of the phrase. Um, the largest and most accepted theory is that it comes from the actors in vaudeville, but other such theories are that um, Edwin Booth broke his leg trying to uh, stop his brother from save uh, from shooting Lincoln and some other wild crazy theories as well so yeah no the vaudeville thing makes the most sense yep so yeah that's that's our little game yeah. huzzah I, I think I won but mostly because you cheated me into winning I mean uh, which is fine with me that's my my goal is that all my friends should win I know that's. Aww. I know that's not. It, it's. It's. It's not really fair of me, but it's sweet and nice, and I like it. Um, and also, it means that you get to come back and bring a couple categories of fun facts of your own to try and stump me. Oh, and oh it's, it's coming, Cassidy. You will. You will be stumped, and it will not be sweet. It will be vengeful. <laughs> and you don't have to uh, bring all three categories you can just come up with a couple fun facts or you can come up with a couple categories and then i will come up oh, with no. a couple categories oh, no, 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 and we no. can swap no no this is, oh. game, this is game on this is game on guys all right <laughs> <laughs> this will be fun and it is fun and it was fun thank you for having me on your wonderful show absolutely well we're gonna keep recording for a minute and chatting so that way i can put out un unedited things for Patreon to listen to us talk about our lives and random things. This show is recorded, produced, directed, and edited by Connor J. Cassidy, with music by Sounds Like Sanders. Our podcast is hosted on podserve.fm, and our music was found via soundstripe.com. Please follow us on all social media at funfactswith. And if you like the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, have a nice day.